It's Jenna, but I think you know my voice already. Hey, Jenna. Um, how are you, I'm Sean? Good. How are you? I'm good. Um, I, I saw on on the video where you were mic'd up, and it was very entertaining. You you said to Antoine Winfield Jr. you you likened him to a brother. Uh, what made you say that, and what's so special about <laughs> this guy to allow him to to earn that type of praise so quickly? Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like once Winfield got here, we kind of clicked uh, automatically. Um, I mean, we're not too far in age or a year apart, but um, I don't know. I guess it's just the connection on the field and off the field. You know, we can talk about football stuff. We can talk about video games. We can talk about sports. So it really doesn't matter. Um, and I feel like we just have that type of relationship where I can kind of just look at him as like more than a, a teammate. And I, I have that with a lot of guys, but um, his was his was rather quick than, than not. So. Yeah, I mean, what went through your mind there out on the field when uh, when he got that sack force fumble there, which really helped get things rolling for you guys as a defense? And I know Jordan had a pick before that, but but what did that do for you guys? Yeah, it, I mean, it, it made us excited, obviously. It turned me up a lot. Um, I mean, it's just a big play by a big-time player, you know, and, and for it being his first, you know, turnover cause in the game, it was a real big thing to him. It was a real big thing to all of us. Um, and he was nominated, you know, for the Rookie of the Week and stuff like that. Um, so I was really, really excited for him. He told me he was going to do it. So um, just to see him do it, it was kind of like he caught his own shot. So um, it was, it was kind of cool. Thank you. All right, next is going to be Rick Stroud. Sean, I, I don't know that everybody knew you played with that much swag out there. <laughs> is, <laughs> is, that, is that always kind of been a part of your game? Or after, you know, getting having a good rookie year, right, <laughs> uh, that, that confidence now – has it just transferred onto the field uh, every week? Yeah, Rick. Um, I think that uh, I think that I was born with swag, obviously, um, and I don't think that my swag has ever went away. I'm a very confident guy. I'm a very confident player. Um, I feel like in, throughout college, you know, I, I play with a, a lot of swagger. I play with a lot of confidence. I play with a lot of aggression, um, and I still do. Obviously, last year, it's a lot easier when you know um, your responsibilities and your jobs, and you can play a lot faster. You can react to a lot of things differently and do um, kind of be yourself. And um, a lot of guys, you know, they play with either a lot of a juice, aggression, or you got guys that need to be, you know, completely locked in to, to do their job. Um, but for me, it's like I need to be relaxed. I need to, 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 to feel at peace um, and just have fun. And, and you had you had fun in the locker room uh, with the TikTok. <laughs> whose who's idea was that? Is, yeah, is that, yeah, is that yeah. your thing? Yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. I, I, yeah, I did. A lot of fun. All right. Our next one's going to be Greg Allman. Hey, Sean. Obviously, it comes down to making plays when you have the chance. But to look at the two games you guys have played as a defense and have the first game with no interceptions and then have the second game uh, with as many takeaways as you did, what's the key to, to making that the norm for you guys the rest of the way? Um, the key to just taking the ball away is just being consistent, um, being in the right pace at the right time, um, and just reading your keys and playing the ball. It's one thing to obviously – um, have your receiver covered up, bottled up, um, but you need to get your head back around, look at the ball. I know last week it was a play that I had um, where I was in coverage. It was it was tight coverage, um, but I didn't get my head around, so I wasn't able to make the play on the ball. And obviously, if if, if I did get my head around, the outcome probably would have been different. Um, so it's just being being consistent, being um, true to your keys, and, and kind of playing ball and, and reading what you see and, and playing what you see. Thanks, Sean. And that's Ed and Cena. Hi, Sean, I think you kind of talked about this a little bit, but, you know, you guys as a secondary really seem to have a certain kind of camaraderie. And, you know, we see the TikTok, we see, you know, the way you guys are in the field, you know, the way you guys lock arms before a game. Um, you know, what, what is it, how, how does that all develop? Is it because you guys are kind of all the same age? You guys have all kind of come come up the same way? You guys had to kind of, you know, you've had your ups and downs. I mean, what what, what is it about the camaraderie that you guys have as a secondary that, um that, that, that's created that way? Um, to answer your question, I would say, um, you know, we're brothers at the end of the day, and we, we go out there each and every day and we fight for each other. Um, I feel like a lot of people from the outside world looking in, they don't think that we're as good as we think we are. Um, and so you're going to have times where you have people that are against you, and you got to be, you know, you have to stay together, stay within each other um, to, you know, kind of go through what you want to go through together and go to those triumphs. Um, I mean, they had us, what? 32nd, you know, 32nd best secondary in the NFL. So um, obviously we have a lot to prove. And so if they don't see it now, then they'll see it eventually. But, I mean, we don't re need to keep talking about it and, and restating the, the obvious. 
Um, but we're going to go out and battle, and we're going to do our job each and every week. Thank you. Next is going to be Steve Isbitz. Sean, a lot of your teammates seem very excited just being around Leonard Fournette and his energy. What are you seeing in practice related to that, or what, or what can you say about that? Yeah, Leonard, Leonard brings a lot of energy. Uh, he's, a really, he's a really funny guy, um, him and Devin. They're kind of very similar in ways. Um, and he's kind of similar to myself in a way, too. You know, he's always having fun. Um, but when it comes to locking in and playing ball, that's what he's going to do. He's a baller. Um, he's going to say what's on his mind. He's going to say how he's feeling. Uh, he's going to have guys behind him, and, and he's going to lead. And um, very, very good player, very good uh, human being off the field. Um, and I'm just glad he's here now. And Coach had mentioned the defense was a little bit gassed very late in the game. Was there any kind of consensus from from you, you guys on, as to what happened? Um, just fatigue, probably. Um, you know, heat, everything plays in transition to that, but that's something that we have to fight through. Um, and that's when the energy comes into play. That's where uh, pushing each other and fighting for your guys and, and knowing that uh, each and every play matters. You know, Carolina was fighting uh, to continue to be in that game, and so we can't slack off and, and, and take a playoff or something like that because it could cost us a point. It could cost us, um, you know, make the game a lot closer and, and maybe the outcome could be different. Um, but at the end of the day, we have to just keep within each other and just keep pushing and fighting for the, the guy next to you. Thanks. All right, next is Taylor Jenkins. Hey, Sean, going back to that mic'd up video, before Jordan's interception, you were saying, scoot up, scoot up. And then after the play, you were telling him that you called it. But McCaffrey wasn't lined up on the play side, and he had only had a handful of targets coming into this game. What exactly did you see on that play that you were telling him to scoot up for? Was it McCaffrey or was it something else? Um, I mean, before the play even started, uh, Jordan, Jordan knew what the play was coming. He knew everything that was coming. I just kind of reiterated it to let him know that he, was, he saw what he was seeing. Um, it was just a lot of film study. Uh, I'm not going to tell you exactly what I saw because – um, yeah. I don't want to give away my tricks and my tips, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, he knew that the play was coming. I, I told him, I reminded him that it was coming. I just wanted him to scoot up um, to get him in a better position to make that play um, and to clear up my read a lot because it, it made my read a lot easier. And so he did it. That's what happened. And uh, he made the turnover, made a good play. And you guys have a really young defensive backs room. So to see that kind of communication and, and that, that um, just cerebral play, what do you credit to this young secondary coming so far from a mental aspect with most of you really only being in the league in your second, third years? Um, just just being accountable, uh, holding each other accountable for everything that we do. Um, communicating is the easiest thing. I mean, we communicate each and every day. Everybody talks to each other. Um, and why would that change on the field? You know, if anything, it should get even more um, – more you know vocal and so the more you talk the more it's easier to see things it's easier to read things um it's easier to pass things off make plays tell people what you see alert cracks alert you know over routes alert under routes and so um just communicating makes you be able to play faster and that's all you want to do is go out there and play fast and make plays we have time for a few more next is going to be kevin o'donnell Sean, when you see uh, the passion just pour out from Tom Brady, whether it's uh, excitement or just a frustration over something that didn't work, what does it do for the defense when you when you kind of hear him just uh, bellowing on the on the sidelines? Uh, we just want to get the ball back to him. <laughs> he's, he's obviously got something to prove. So uh, every chance we get, we're going to try to take the ball and put it in his hands and, and let him do his magic and let those guys um, do what they do and put points on the board. Our job is to stop guys from scoring. Um, if they don't score, they don't win the game. And so just giving Tom and giving Chris and giving those guys the ball back um, and Mike and, and, and Leonard and Rojo and stuff like that, we're going to let our offense do what our offense does, control we control, and uh, just get the ball to him as many times as he, as he needs it. So, I know Devin was talking about he's, he talks with him a lot during training camp, trying to see what yeah. Tom sees defensively. Um, does he do that? Does Tom help you guys out throughout the game saying, hey, I just I, I kind of picked up on this? and kind of giving you some feedback of, of things that he's seen out there? Yeah, he does. Um, who, who else does it? Blaine does it a lot, too. Um, Blaine communicates with me a lot about um, my disguises. And, and like I told you guys this before, but about my disguises, how I should show certain things, how I shouldn't show certain things, um, when he can tell I'm coming so I can switch it up and stuff like that. Um, and by him doing that from a quarterback's aspect and, and, and standpoint, it allows me to kind of outsmart that quarterback that I'm going against and, and try to maneuver in some things that um, – that I can try and get him on. So it helps me out tremendously, and I know it helps the other guys out as well. Thank you. All right, last one is going to come from Casey Hudson. K 
Casey. Casey. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. There we go. Hey, Sean. How you doing? All right. Last week, um, kind of in unison, a lot of the defensive players were mentioning that their goals coming out of week one were to get their hands on more balls and get those interceptions and make more tackles. You guys executed some of those goals this past Sunday. So as you prepare for the Broncos, what are some new goals heading into week three and how confident are you that you guys will be able to execute even more? Uh, number one goal is to win. Um, take the ball away. And that's always our goal each and every week is to just create turnovers. Um, no, no big plays, no balls over top of our heads, uh, no big runs. And so um, by doing all those things, you know, we have a, a really good chance of winning the game. Um, and, and just being locked in throughout the week, it allows us to, to be focused and to know our jobs and, and you know, make less uh, mental errors and mental mistakes because that's what really costs you ball games. Um, penalties are a big thing. Um, and I know as, as the DBs go, um, you know, this week we're, we're really emphasizing on um, our hands and, and making sure our hands are in the right placement. We're not tugging guys, not pulling guys. Um, and, and we're making sure we're reading our keys and just playing the ball and not, you know, getting um, pass interference calls that we don't need to get. So um, that's kind of what we're focused on, and we're just going to keep working on those and, until we get um, to where we want to be. Awesome. That's all for today. Thanks, Sean. Thank you guys all for uh, asking me the questions. Have fun.